Hi, this is Richard Quack here. Welcome to this webinar. Who am I? My name is Richard Quack and I am a chartered accountant by profession. All right, I am from the sunny country of Malaysia and I have personally authored more than 10 books over the years. All right, the books are on personal development, uh, on network marketing and also on internet marketing. Okay, and I am also conducting training and seminars in this region that means in Malaysia and also other parts of Asia as well. And I have more than 25 years experience in network marketing. Currently, I'm involved with a US-based company and I am one of the top leaders in Asia. Okay. Now, how to use Facebook to generate 25 to 50 targeted leads a day? Would you be interested to find out that? I believe that everybody outside there are looking for ways to generate leads or consistent supply of leads, right? So here is a very important topic that I'm going to share with you. The problem for most network marketers, let's have a look at the four main problems. Number one, they do not like to approach family members and friends, right? Of course, you know why, you know, a lot of friends and family members will look down on them, will probably laugh at them, ridicule them and so on. So basically, that is one of the things that uh, network marketers don't like to approach family members. Number two, they do not like rejection. I'm sure everybody don't like rejection. In fact, the word no kills a lot of people, all right? Number three, a lot of people are still using the traditional methods of generating leads, all right? Basically, you know, they're making a name list, a prospect list, and, uh, you know, talking to people within uh, three feet and so on, okay? Now, lastly, they do not know how to generate free endless leads. This is very important. If you are in network marketing, you need prospect, you need leads, all right? So most people do not uh, know how to generate leads using internet and social media, okay? So let's move on. The traditional ways of generating leads, all right? Now, what are the ways? Number one, you make a name list or prospect list of about 200 names. That's the usual traditional way, right? Number two, cold calling, right? Cold calling, I tell you, you know, uh, it brings chill to my spine, you know, because why? I personally also do not like to do cold calling. Uh, so basically, this is the other method of uh, generating leads by cold calling. Number three, the three feet rule I mentioned just now, you know, uh, uh, talk to anybody within your three feet rule proximity, which is, I mean, a lot of people cannot do that, right? Because it's not easy. You're talking to strangers, you know, because everybody around you, three feet, you know, and, and they are strangers to you. And then you approach them and talk to them. People uh, probably, you know, uh, get irritated by you as well. Okay, let's move on. Now, what is the problem with the list then? Okay, now you have a list of about 200 names, let's say, all right? It is just a small list, right? And with this small list, probably you exhaust it within a few months. Within a few months, you have exhausted the, the list, all right? And after that, what happened? Well, no more list, no more prospect. I can't do it anymore. That's what happened to most of the network marketers there. All right, the other thing is that many on the list have no business experience at all because on the list, probably, you will list, uh, put down the name of their relative, your family members, your grandfather, your grandmother, and so on, right? And the thing is that, you know, most of them don't have any business experience. I'm sure you realize that network marketing is a business and you need to have entrepreneur mindset to be able to be successful okay so a lot of people on the list are not qualified whatsoever okay the other thing is that the prospects that you have on the list they know you very well because they are family member members and close friends and so on and if they know you very well you know what they've seen you fail many times before all right and they know your history your past record and what happened is that when you talk to them again you think they trust you they probably say, well, you do it first. When you're successful, come back to me. That's it. Okay? Now, the other thing is that with that small list, what happens when you run out of prospect? When you run out of prospect, what happens? They'll be scratching their head. You know, say, uh, i got no prospect, nobody to talk to. And they will slowly fizzle off. That's for sure. So that is a problem with the traditional way of making a list. Okay? Let's move on. Now, let's look at the future. All right? The future is very important. According to Paul Zin Pilzer, all right, who is Paul Zinpilzer? All right, he is the uh, Nobel Prize winner. He's the advisor to two U.S. past president. All right, he said in the next few years, there will be more than one million new millionaires in the United States. Now, this is talking about United States alone. What about uh, in other countries in Asia and other parts of the world? I'm sure there will be more than that, right? The, sad, uh, the, the strange part is that, you know, the shocking part is that uh, the, in the next few years, there will be one 
million new millionaires in the United States, all right? Now, there are only currently 8.9 million millionaires in the United States, and it took 229 years to reach that, my friend. All right, so 229 years to reach that, but today we are talking about just the next few years, we are going to create 1 million new millionaires in the uh, United States. And don't forget, you should be excited. In Asia, in other parts of the world, there'll be a lot of people who are going to be millionaires. The question you should ask yourself, are you going to be one of them? Are you going to be one of them? Okay, let's move on. Now, he identified three main areas that this millionaires will come from. Okay, number one, it comes from a home-based business. We are talking about home-based business. That means people working from the comfort of their own home. This includes professionals as well. Okay, lawyers working from home, accountants working from home, you know, and so on. All the professional people that are working from home, this is called a home-based business. But do you realize that network marketing is a home-based business as well? So we are in this category as well, okay? So you should be excited that we are in the home-based business, okay? Number two is intellectual distribution. Intellectual distribution, okay, is teaching people to become successful. We are in the information age today. Information is big this, in this part of time, all right? Internet, in, 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 information is important because everybody are looking for information and basically that is the second area whereby uh, the distribution of intellectual knowledge and so on. And guess what? In network marketing, are we teaching people to become successful? All right, we are teaching people to be successful. We are training people and so on. So we are also in the business of intellectual distribution. And the third area is using the power of the internet and of course social media as well which is lacking because a lot of old traditional hardcore network marketers they are still missing out on this part they have the two home-based business intellectual distribution but they miss out the third one that's why if you really want to be truly successful you got to cover all the three areas my friend not just the first two so using the power of the internet is so so important which i'm going to talk about uh, in this webinar okay let's move on now let's talk about uh, social media. So I want to introduce you to some social medias here. All right, these are some of the popular social medias. Uh, Facebook. All right, you know Facebook well. They have 2.5 billion members at this time. LinkedIn has got more than 600 million members. LinkedIn is actually the Facebook for professionals. Okay, 600 million is still a lot. Instagram is the rising star of social media. They have 1 billion uh, members. And YouTube, I'm sure you know YouTube, right? Uh, streaming of videos and so on and they have more than 2 billion members. So these are the main uh, uh, social media, as of course there are others like, you know, uh, uh, Pinterest, okay, uh, like TikTok, the new one, right? So there are so many outside there, but the thing is that, you know, social media is very, very important. Everybody is using social media. And if you are not using social media, you are behind, my friend, okay? So let's move on. Now, we are going to focus about face on Facebook, all right? In this uh, webinar, we're going to talk about Facebook. Now, Facebook is founded on 4th February 2004 by Mark Zuckerberg, okay? It is the largest social media site outside there. Currently, they have 2.5 billion members, which is massive, all right? 2.5 billion members, okay? They have population that is, you know, more than uh, India and China. <laughs> Don't you think so? If, if Facebook is a country, they have more population. Okay, so basically, we are going to focus on Facebook here because they have 2.5 billion members, okay? Now, let's talk about attraction marketing because I believe attraction marketing is very important. A lot of traditional people, always people, are still doing push marketing. Push means you push to them. All right, that means join me, buy from me, you know, and so on. Those are push marketing which don't work anymore. you got to be an expert using attraction marketing to attract people towards you. That's what is important, okay? Now, what is attraction marketing? Attraction marketing is about captivating your target market to want to do business with you because of who you are and what they see on your social media page. So basically, it's so important, you know, you attract people by, you know, uh, whatever you have on your social media page, how you brand yourself and so on, okay? Now, branding yourself by providing value, very important because you want to solve people's problem, all right? A lot of people, even in network marketing, they have a lot of problem. And if you are trying to sell them your program, sell them your product, you are giving them another problem. You are adding to their existing problem. So what you're going to do here is going to brand yourself by product, providing value and also by solving their problem, okay? Then they will be attracted to you. 
when you apply simple attraction marketing principles to your social media profile activity, you can be talking to perfect prospect instantly and closing sales faster. All right, so when you use attraction marketing strategy, you know, you are sorting people out and people are approaching you rather than you chase after people. That is what it's all about. Okay, let's move on. Now, the important rules, I'm sure you know about this, right? People buy from people they know, they like, and trust. Isn't it true? All right, you are their friend on Facebook. They know you, but they still have not liked you. They still have not trust you. All right, so that's important. But I want you to remember something here. People love to buy. Do you believe me? People love to buy, but they hate to be sold. That means they want to buy. They make the decision themselves. You cannot push them. All right, when somebody comes to you and say, okay, I want to buy from you, that is attraction marketing at work. All right, now, the most important point here is that you must provide value and solve problems, okay? People are always looking for ways to solve their problem, okay? Not joining another company, buying another product. It doesn't solve their problem, okay? So let's move on. Now, let's look at the Facebook strategies today. As I said, I'm going to talk only about Facebook. Of course, when you learn about Facebook, you can apply it to other social media like LinkedIn as well, okay? It is quite similar. But let's have a look at Facebook here. Okay, the step number one, you have to create your profile page. For goodness sake, if you don't have a Facebook page yet, it is free. It is free. If you still don't have, then go and open one, all right? Go and open one, all right? It is not difficult. Go to facebook.com, all right? www.facebook.com and register yourself there. Put in your email and then after that, you know, uh, create your page. Okay, this is my own page here. If you can see, uh, it's a sample page for you to look at it. All right, later on, I'm going to talk about some of the features here. But the thing is that if you do not know how to create a profile page, well, there's one place that you can get all the information you need. Go to YouTube, all right? Go to YouTube and make a search on how to create Facebook profile page. That's it, all right? And there'll be a lot of videos that teaching you how to do it, all right? So the first step that you need to do is create your own profile page. But I hope that most of you already have your own Facebook page. And let's move on to step number two. Now, step number two is branding. Now, important, you want to use attraction marketing, you got to talk about branding, all right? You got to brand yourself, okay? Now, what is the first thing that you need to brand yourself with is the profile photo. Remember, the photo of you. Now, the photo of you, not the photo of you and your family, not a photo of your dog or your cat or uh, animated photo of you, you know, cartoon photo of you, no, no. It has to look professional because people come to your page, they see a profile photo. All right. If possible, take a professional photo, spend some money on it. All right. And then you have a nice photo which you can use for a few years. All right. And a photo, make sure that, you know, it is a, a portrait up to here. All right. It's a portrait photo with you smiling, of course. All right. So basically, the profile photo is to brand you. When people come to your page, they look at you. And you identify you are a person that can be trusted and so on. That's important, okay? Don't put a, uh, a photo of a dog or a cat. By the way, do you know this is called Facebook? It's about Facebook, not cat book, dog book, and so on, okay? So let's move on to the second one that is important branding is the cover photo. You know, the cover photo is the picture on top, the banner there, the cover photo, right? Don't, don't leave it with the default, all right? When you have a default there, uh, that, that Facebook provided for you, then people come to your page, they see you are, you, you are not professional, you don't know what you're talking about. All right, cover photo, how can you do it? There are a few ways. Number one, you can create it yourself. If you know how to use Photoshop, you create it yourself. Or you can go to a free website that allow you to uh, uh, create your own cover photo. It is a free website whereby they uh, provide you with a lot of templates, then you can put text inside and other things, okay? It is called Canva. C-A-N-V-A, canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. You go there, open an account, you can use it for free. Okay, that's one easy way to do it. Or you can outsource to other people to do it for you. You can go to Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You can go to Fiverr.com and look for people who can create the photo for you. You search there, uh, Facebook cover photo, all right? And then get them to do it for you, give them some specification and, you know, uh, get them to do it for you. It might cost you, I mean, five to twenty-five dollars. That's all. Five to twenty-five dollars is an investment for your uh, business. Don't you think so? 
Okay? And the other thing, when, uh, when you talk about cover photo, don't put a lot of text there, right? Don't put a lot of text there. A lot of people like to put quotes up there. People don't like to read each, uh, a distraction, okay? So don't put uh, a, a lot of text there. Just maybe a bit of text, yeah? But uh, don't put a lot of text. Now, the other way of getting a cover photo, which is uh, quite uh, uh, easy, is that you go to Google Images and search for holiday resorts like Bora Bora or Hawaii, you know, and get the photo and use it as a cover photo. Look for a nice, a bright uh, photo and put it there as a cover photo. Or my suggestion is that if you've got a dream place, you want to go for holiday, your dream destination, okay, search for a photo there and put it on your cover photo. So that is your cover photo. All right, so remember, profile photo, cover photo, very important, okay? Now, the third thing that you need to do is the setting. This is very important. A lot of people don't care about the setting. When you open a, a Facebook account, there are a lot of settings that you got to go through. And let me share with you the settings, okay? If you go to Facebook on the top right-hand side, okay, there is a, a drop-down menu. You can see setting. You click on there and you go into setting, okay? Now, my advice to you is that set everything to either public or everyone can see, okay? You want everybody to be able to see your, your post, uh, uh, your, your profile page and so on. Isn't true? So set everything to public and everyone can see. Okay? The only exception is you want to hide your friends. You don't want people to see your friend because your friend is like your asset, right? So basically what you need to do is that hide your friend and when you come to uh, your friend, just put there, only me. Only me can see. That's it. Don't put public or everyone. Only me. That's why you got to hide your friend. Are you with me? Okay. Now, the other thing is that you got to fill everything in. All right, I mean, uh, your Facebook profile page must look professional if it is blank, 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 blank. You know, people don't think that you're serious about it. All right, fill in everything. I always give an example. You go for a job interview, right? They give you, the company give you an application form. Would you fill in everything or you leave most of it blank? Of course, you fill in everything. Same thing also with Facebook, right? Fill in all your details there. All right, what you do, what's your education like, if you're married, say you're married. Fill in your date of birth as well, all right? Even your date of birth. Well, of course, I know ladies don't want to tell people, uh, let people know how old they are. Well, you can put your date of birth and you can leave out the year. That's okay, fair. All right, so remember, fill out everything, okay? Fill out everything. And if you want to see, uh, you can go to my page and have a look, or you go to other Facebook influencer page, you know, and, and have a look at how they do their, uh, their branding, okay? So that's uh, step number two about branding. Let's move on. Now, the other thing is about the About Me page. I can assure you a lot of people, they leave it blank. This is the page that tells people who you are and what you do. It's so important. All right, I visit so many pages on, on Facebook and most of them leave this blank. They leave it blank. And what do you think is the opinion of most people? If you leave it blank, it doesn't look professional as well. In fact, this is like real property, you know. You've got to tell people about you. So the About Me page, if you can see there, I got an arrow on the top there. If you go to their profile page, you click on the About. And on the bottom left, you click on Details. All right, you click on Details and then you will come to this page. Details about you. Fill in. All right, like myself here, About Myself. All right, I put my uh, description there. Of course, you don't have to write an uh, article about it. Just write what is relevant there so that you wow people. People read it, they become, wow, I like this person. Okay, so write it. Take some time. To think about it and write it because once you write it it's going to be there for a long long time all right and it's going to tell people who you are because when you talk to people on facebook you're not going to tell them who you are what you do and so because they come to the about page they know a lot about you that's all okay and you got to wow people when they come to this page okay let's move on so what to include in the about me page i have a summary summary for you here I say that it's good if you break into uh, five sections, all right? The first section is, who am I? Tell people, who are you? All right, where you come from, all right? And uh, a little bit about your background, you know, like myself, I say I'm an author and so on, right? Now, number two, right now, what do I do? Well, tell people what you do, all right? Like me, I say that, you know, I am a... Uh, Internet marketer, I'm a network marketer, I'm an author, I author more than 10 books and blah, 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 and so on, right? So basically, tell people what you do. Important, right? People need to know what you do and who are you. All right, then the third section is how can I help you? You see, this is so important because when people come to your page, they are looking to solve their problem. So that you must tell them how you can help them to solve their problem. Okay, I give you 
an example, you can say that, you know, I am a social media consultant. I help people uh, with, the, uh, with the social media and so on. Well, if they come to your page, they read there, they might be interested to ask you to help them. Okay? Or you can say, you know, I am an expert at uh, lead generation. I can help people to generate leads uh, through social media. Okay? When they know that, you know, they, they, they might want help from you. Is that true? So that is the third section. How can I help? And the fourth section is what people say about me. This is important. This is like testimonial about you. All right? Because people want to know what sort of person are you, what people talk about you. So what people say about me will be the fourth section. Now, you can get testimonials, a short testimonial from your uh, team members, all right, team members, or even from your family members, from your friends, uh, and put it there. You don't have to have a lot of, two or three of those are good enough, right? Uh, put some testimonials there. But if you run out of ideas to get testimonials, I suggest to you, go to uh, Fiverr.com again. F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Go to Fiverr.com and you can get people to uh, give you testimonials there as well. Just pay them maybe $5 for a testimonial, something like that, all right? And number five, the last one is how to contact me. People must be able to contact you. So put down your telephone number and also your email address there, okay? So important to be able to let people contact you. So that is what you can do. Uh, try it out and do it on your own. And what I suggest to you is that read it out a few times and then let your, your wife, your spouse, you know, let your spouse read it through. Maybe your children read it through and see what they think. It must wow people. Are you with me? That's important. And I also can suggest that, you know, you can put this in. I am on a mission to whatever is filled in the blank. Example, all right. I'm on a mission to help network marketers to expand your business using social media, something like that, okay? And then after that, explain about, about it more, okay? So that's all about what is to include on the About Me page. Let's move on. Ah, now, what's important here? This is a no-no. Do not show the name of your company. Important, okay? Do not show your products. Do not show your website. Do not show any pictures with all the above just now, all right? Now, a lot of people I see, you know, they put the banner there, uh, uh, the name of the company, the picture of the products, all right, and even the website address, you know, or their pictures of them taking uh, a photo with the company management team and so with the name of the uh, company staring right in the face, you know. Well, the thing is that this is wrong, okay? If you don't believe me, if you see people doing it, you, you, you message them, ask them, how is it... Uh, uh, doing for you. Is it successful? I don't think so. You know why? I give you a few reasons. Okay, number one, you can say you're a network marketer or you're in network marketing, no problem, but never mention the name of the company or your product or the website. You know why? When people hear the name of your company, you tell them, all right, what do they do? If they have not heard of the company, they do a search on Google, right? They will make a search on Google and you know what happened? On Google, anybody can put anything, the opinion there because the internet is free for people to put their opinion there. So when they come across the name of your company and then somebody say it's a scam, well, what do you think they will think about your company? Are they going to approach you or, or are, they will, are they going to be interested? No, because it's a scam, right? Are you with me? Even the product, they know that is your, your, your company related to a company, they make a search. All right. Now, the other thing is this. Once they make a search on Google, you know what? There's so many websites outside there. They might land on somebody else's website. And you know what? They might join the other person, my friend. You might They might join the other person. You're doing all the work and they go and join somebody else. So please, please, remember, never, never put the name of your company, your products, and your website. And also, if there are any pictures, don't put pictures related to all these few things, okay? Remember, this is a no-no. Let's move on. Now, step number three, okay? Friend request. Now, the most important thing is that you got to build your friend list. Don't you think so? You got to build your friend. Now, Facebook allow you to have 5,000 friends maximum, right? 5,000 friends maximum. But the truth is that it's not about how many friends you have. It's about the engagement you have with these people. All right, you can have 5,000 friends, but no engagement, no point. Because social media, especially Facebook, is all about engagement. All right, you may have 1,000 friends, but if they're all engaged with you, fantastic, better than having 5,000 friends. So engagement is very, very important. All right, we talk about engagement later on. Okay, then the other thing is that you must also know who are your target markets. Who do you want to target? Important, right? You are in network marketing. Who are the people who are the good target for you? 
All right. And my recommendation is that, you know, people in personal development is a good market because personal development is a big market and the people in personal development, they already, you know, have the right mindset. They're trying to improve themselves and so on. So it is quite a good uh, 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 market, right? When you talk about personal development, you can uh, make a search, you know, uh, use the graph search there. If you can see there, the graph search, all right, you can put the graph search there. Uh, look for people in personal development or you can even use the name of the uh, 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 gurus, all right? You can put the name of, uh, let's say, Tony Robbins, you know, people who like Tony Robbins, people who like Robert Kiyosaki and so on. So you make a search on the graph. You can see there, right on the top of the, uh, on your profile page, you can see the, the box there. That is the search. Make a search there, okay? And then send friend request with a message. Now, sending a friend request is not difficult. Just click and send a friend request, all right? But before you send a friend request, I suggest that, you know, go ahead and look at the profile page first. Make sure that these people are active. These people are doing it properly. They are professional. Are you me? If you go to somebody's, uh, 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 you want to invite a friend, don't just click friend, 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 friend. No, go and look at their page because these are going to be people who you are going to prospect and who are you are going to engage with. Important. All right. So basically, you know, uh, uh, look at their page. All right. Especially look at their profile photo, the cover photo, the about me page. And on the timeline, on the profile page, see whether they're active or not. Whether they're active or not. It's important. If they're not active, then no point. Okay? So when you send a friend request, if possible, send with a message as well. Send with a message. And the message can be something simple, all right? Uh, I'll give an example. Like, you know, uh, I came across your, your Facebook page and I think that uh, I like it very much. Uh, I would like to be friend with you. Uh, if it is okay, I already send you a, a friend request. Please uh, approve it. Something like that, simple. It's just a courtesy, right? Rather than just uh, clicking friend, 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 send them a personal message as well. Make it more personal, right? Now, I know some people go crazy. They will, you know, uh, Richard Quack say, you know, make friends. So they go and click friend, 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 friend. You know what? If you click too many friends, and if you ask for too many friend requests, Facebook will suspend you. All right, they suspend you for a few weeks, you know, or maybe, you know, uh, later on, if you still go on, they will, uh, you know, terminate your account. Okay, so my advice to you is that, you know, limit to less than 50 friends request a day. I think good enough, all right? If 50 friends a day, you know, we're talking about 30 days, 1,000 friends request a day, all right? But, you know, I think 50 friend request a day is good. All right, send 50 friend request a day. That's it. Okay, let's move on. Now, there are four types of people on Facebook. It's important for you to realize that four categories of people on Facebook so that you know who are the people you're going to talk to, who are the people you're going to approach, okay? The first category is called eager socializer. Now, these are people who are very active on Facebook, all right? If you go to their page, you know that they are eager socializer. They will post everything, all right? Uh, every day, they will make posting. In fact, not every day. So many times a day. When they go for breakfast, they take a photo, they post. When they go for lunch, they take a photo, they post. When they go out, you know, they will take a photo, they will post. These are eager socializers. All right? They are so uh, friendly. They want to make friends with people. So this is the category of people that you should request to be friends. Because 100%, they're going to approve your friend request. Are you with me? Okay, so eager socializers are those people who are very active, they're bubbly, they like to make friends and so on. That's the first category. I'm sure you go to the page, you know that they're eager socializers. The second category is called e-marketing socializer. These are the people who are interested in make, doing business on the on Facebook, all right? They are very gung-ho on making business on the on Facebook, right? And once you, are, uh, you become friends with them, you know, they will be sending you promotion, promotion after promotion all the time, right? So these are e-marketing socializers. Guess what? When you approach them to be friends, they're going to approve you, that's for sure, because they want to have a lot of friends so that they can promote too. But the note that, that you must remember is this, you know, these are people who are hungry. They are looking for to improve their life, to earn extra income, right? So they can be a very good prospect for you, all right? Now, the third category are called reluctant socializers. These are people who are anti-social. What do I mean by anti-social? That means they only have their Facebook friends who are family members, close family members, and close friends. That's it. All right. Uh, they don't like to talk to other people. They don't like to friend other people. So these are what we call reluctant socializers. So, well, you guess it right, right? You don't approach them because they are not going to approve you. That's for sure. All right. So reluctant socializer. The fourth category are what we call missing in action. These are the people who found that 
Facebook is very exciting years ago, right? They found that Facebook very exciting, Facebook very good. They set up the Facebook page and so on. Then after that, they got discouraged and they go missing. All right, they don't even log into the Facebook uh, page. All right, so basically, these are the type of people we call missing in action. So, what do you think? Well, don't don't uh, ask them to be a friend because if you send a friend request, probably they they will probably log in after three months, you know, and so on. So basically, uh, don't. So, in conclusion, send friend request to the first two category: eager socializer and e marketing socializer. Are you with me? All right, let's move on. Now, step number four is about communication. Communication is very important. All right, like Anthony Robbins says, you know, uh, the quality of your life is the quality of your communication. All right, now, what are the things that you should do? Number one, be casual. Yeah, be casual. Don't be serious, right? Be casual with people. Just like you talk to a friend, right? Be casual and always end your message with a question. Important. And your message with a question. When you communicate with them over messenger, right? Uh, you know, be casual and end with a question. And ask them questions, right? What type of question? Open-ended question. Okay, open-ended questions that uh, require uh, uh, explanation, all right? Which I put here, five wives and one husband. What does it mean? Five wives means where, when, what, which and so on okay so five and of course one husband is how all right how so it's important to be able to uh, ask open-ended question as opposed to a uh, close-ended question close-ended question are questions that require an answer of yes or no that's all so you can uh, pro uh, continue with the conversation all right so you got to ask open-ended question okay now the other thing when you ask question all right don't do not let it appear to be like an interrogation. All right, you got to let it flow. Okay, I give you an example here. All right, let's say I ask people, uh, my my prospect, uh, what do you do, and they say, oh, I am a real property agent. All right, now don't Im immediately ask them another question. All right, when they say I'm a real property agent, you probably tell them, oh, that's fantastic. You know, I got some friends who are also in this line. Isn't it true? Then after that, then you ask them another question. How long you've been doing that and so on, okay? So, don't appear to be like an interrogation. And lastly, this is very important, don't get too personal. Remember, your intention is what? Your intention is to close them, okay? To close them either for sale or for the business. So, don't get too personal. Because some people get too personal, they get straight off, you know? And they ask, uh, how's your relationship with your spouse? You know, how many children you have and so on. So basically, don't get personal. Remember, your intention is to close them. So ask questions that you uh, want the answer to be able to close them. Okay, I'll give you an example later on. Let's move on. Now, example of question. These are some example of question. This is not limited to, to everything, but these are some of the questions that you can ask. Okay, these are the script you can use. What do you do? Important. All right, what do you do? Very casual. Then after that, they respond. You ask them, what does it entail? All right, what does it entail? Example, if they say I'm a real property, then you ask them, you know, uh, what sort of real property do you uh, promote? Okay, then how long have you been doing that? You're getting to know them. Are you mean you're trying to get to know them? And then you ask them, what do you do before that? What do you do before that? Important, right? And how is the present economic situation affecting you? Well, ask, when you ask questions, you know, wait for the response. Okay. Or, at the present moment, with all this, uh, uh, what's the health crisis, you can ask them, how is the limited movement or the lockdown uh, affecting your situation? Okay. Then, you can also ask, do you have any experience in network marketing now? You're coming towards network marketing now. You ask them. After all, you're asking them, do you have any experience in network marketing? You're not trying to sell them or asking them to join a company. Just ask them, what is the experience in network marketing? Just to find out more about them. The whole idea is to get to know them by asking Questions. Are you me? By asking questions. Okay. Now, sometimes people get irritated. Okay. Why? When people ask, okay, they will probably ask you, why are you asking me so many questions, my friend? Why are you asking so many questions? Well, what are you going to answer? Very simple. I give you a simple uh, a script here. I've made some fabulous new friends here and found that the best way to learn about someone is to ask questions. Isn't it true? And then, Ask them another question. Remember, always end with a question. Alright, so ask them another question. Is that good? Alright. 
Now, the focus of the conversation, all right? What is the focus? Focus on the prospect and ask questions. Remember, you want to know about your prospect, so ask a lot of questions, open-ended questions. Do not attempt to tell them about you. No, no point. Don't tell them about who you are, what you do, and so because it is all on the about you page. Remember, it's all about in your about you page. Everything about you is in your about you page. So what is important is just listen, listen. Okay, we are in the listening business. Okay, so ask questions and listen. Okay, guidelines to follow. This is very important. The content of a person's page indicate the online agenda. When you go to a person's page, you look at their page, then the page will tell them what is the agenda like. Okay, whether they are uh, somebody who is uh, basically looking for opportunity or they are somebody who is looking for uh, friendship or looking for love or whatever it is. So basically, you must be able to see from the online, uh, from the page, what is the on online agenda like. Okay, now sometimes. When you ask for friend request and so on, or when you message people, people don't respond. Okay, there are always cases like that, but don't get disappointed, right? There are five reasons strangers do not respond. Okay, there are five reasons. Number one, they have different agenda than you, right? So they they have different agenda. Probably they are on Facebook, uh, to look for love, to look for a husband or a wife, right? So basically, uh, you know, they have different agenda. Number one, number two. They don't like what they see on your page. That's why it's so important. Your page must look professional. Alright, so that uh, if they don't like what they see on your page, then I'm sure that you've got to improve your page. Okay, number three. You are trying to talk to the wrong people. Yeah, you're talking to the wrong people. You're talking to people uh, who are, you know, uh, what do you call? Who are not interested to communicate with you. Probably they only have friends, uh, family members in their Facebook friends, you know. So basically, you're talking to the wrong people. Number four, they haven't used the account recently. Well, they are missing in action. Definitely, they don't log into Facebook every single day. They log in maybe once a week, twice a week, or once a month, you know, or <laughs> never. All right. Number five, they think you're trying to sell them something. This is very important because you got to communicate with them, not trying to push them or sell them something, okay? Because if they think you're trying to sell them something, well, they won't respond to you, that's for sure. So those are the five reasons why people uh, do not, uh, respond to you okay now this is important note at the bottom here don't focus on making a sale when talking to people what should you focus on focus on whether there's a sale to be made this is very very important okay now the key to avoiding rejection i'm sure you don't like rejection right if you don't like rejection listen to this the key to avoiding rejection is to never talk about your business in any detail until you have learned that the person you are talking to has a need or interest in your business product or service okay that's why you need to ask questions to find out about them all right so never talk to them never provide them with information until you know that they have interest or a need in your business or in your product all right i hope you're learning something here let's move on now this is important bring your prospect out of facebook Okay, this only happens when your prospect asks for more information, all right? Don't try to uh, give information to your prospect if they don't ask for it, all right? So you only provide information when they ask for it, for the information. They probably ask you, by the way, what are you doing? Which company are you with, all right? And when you do that, when they ask that, send them to your website, okay? Take them out of Facebook, send them to your website. And when you talk about website, I, I, I believe that, you know, don't send them to the company website. All right, your company would have your own website, right? But the thing is that if you send to the company website, the website is overwhelming, you know? Too many information there. And you know, overwhelming uh, uh, people will not make a decision. They, they close their mind, all right? So don't send them to the company website. And the other thing is that company website, all right? They have regulation they have to follow, all right? They have government regulation they have to follow. A lot of things they cannot say there. So what I suggest to you is that create your own website. And the website must be a, a squeeze page so that you can capture people's email address and name as well so that you can follow up with them in the future, all right? And in order to do the squeeze page, uh, you need to have an autoresponder, all right? Autoresponder. And also, you need to have a lead magnet. A lead magnet is something that you are giving people for free to capture their name and email address because nobody is going to put in their name and email address if you don't offer them something, all right? So basically, uh, you need to have a... You know your own website created if you cannot do it yourself then you know get somebody else to do for you all right there are a lot of people outside there who, who can do the website for you pay them this is a business all right now the other thing is that bring out of facebook is make a zoom appointment you can make an appointment with them and say okay let's meet on such and such a day 
and then you can talk to them over Zoom or even Skype for that matter, right? Uh, it's important to be able to bring them out of Facebook and talk to them. All right, do appointment with them, uh, uh, you know, and, and talk to them. Today, you know, uh, uh, distance is, is no more a problem, okay? Because you can use uh, technology like Zoom. Zoom is a, a, a free uh, webinar platform, all right? It's free. You can go to www.zoom.us, okay? You can upgrade if you want to, but I think a free account is, is good enough for you, all right? You can use uh, Zoom. Okay, so bring your prospect out of Facebook. That's important. All right, and when you have a website, a squeeze page, especially you can capture people's email address. All right, that's so important. Okay, let's move on. Now, this is important. Listen more than you talk. Right, that's why you know you got only one mouth, but you got two ears. So listen more than you talk. All right, you are in a listening business. Right, not a talking business. All right, you are in a sorting business, not a convincing business. All right, now remember here, you are in a sorting business. That means you are sorting people out. When you ask questions, you are trying to sort who are the uh, right prospect for you. All right, I mean, Facebook have got 2.5 billion. You cannot be talking to everybody. You pick and choose who are the right prospect and then you talk to them, sort them out. Okay, you cannot be talking to everyone. You are wasting your time. All right, sort out who are the good prospect and then you talk to them. All right, I said 50, uh, uh, 25 to 50 leads a day. Well, it's not difficult when you have 2.5 billion, right? So you, you can do that, okay? So we are not in the convincing business. We are not trying to convince people. We are trying to sort people who have got the leadership quality already because when you talk about training people, you know, changing people, I tell you, it's a, a lot of time and it's a waste of time, all right? Look for the right people who are already have the leadership quality, who are already uh, uh, interested in convincing themselves uh, to move on, to be successful, okay? So remember, remember, listen more than you talk. Now, step number four is important. It's about engagement. Now, remember, social media is all about engagement. All right, like I said just now, you can have a lot of friends. There are 5,000 friends, but there is not much engagement. It's no point. You want to be very engaged. Remember that, all right? Engagement is very, very important. Now, why engagement? Why do you need to have engagement? Well, you interact. With people, and when you interact with people, it creates relationship. Don't you think so? All right. How you how you become friends with people by interacting with them, right? You cannot say you meet somebody and then you look at him, he look at you, and you build a relationship. There's no way you got to interact, all right? So same thing with Facebook as well. It's about interaction, all right? Interaction is important. And the other thing is that you provide value as well. When you are engaged with people, you provide value, all right? You provide value, like you know, you you uh, like. And you comment on the post, you know, and you share their post, all right? So engagement is important. And when you have a lot of engagement, you create attention from other people because, you know, people will notice you. Wow, this, this person is very active on Facebook, a lot of engagement. So you create attention from other people as well. So engagement is important. Remember, all right, don't just have a Facebook account and do nothing about it. You got to be totally engaged. If you want to be successful, you got to have active engagement, okay? Now, what are the types of engagement? Well, let me explain to you. Number one is posting. Posting uh, create engagement. What can you post? You can post text, images, and video. All right, those are postings. All right, can uh, text, images, and video. There are five types of posts altogether. Number one is a value post. Value post is the most important. In fact, I will say eighty percent of your post should be value post. Value post is you know how to. Okay, teaching people how to, uh, like motivational code and so on. That is giving value to people. Recognition is more like, you know, uh, uh, you tell people about who's being recognized. And so on. But of course, of course, keep generic. Remember, no name of company, right? Or story, success stories and so on. Again, keep it generic. And then engagement. This is a very important post. Engage engagement, that means you want the people to, to comment, to like, or to share. Okay, engagement is very important. What sort of engagement post? Probably you put a post there. Who is your personal development guru? Who do you like in personal development? Then they have to respond. You put some name there. Maybe uh, Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins. So then ask them to uh, uh, choose which one. So that create an engagement, right? The last one is CTA. CTA is call to action. Important, you got to tell people what to do. So call to action, maybe uh, uh, tell them, okay, visit this website. Go here. Do this. Okay, call to action. Uh, when you talk about posting, all right, on Facebook, you know, you got to post about one to three times a day, all right. No, no point with uh, posting more than that, all right, because you know, uh, 
uh, it's a waste of time. People say, oh, you got to post a lot, you know, uh, uh, five posts, ten posts a day. No, one to three posts is good enough. You know? For me, I post one or two times a day. That's it, okay? Now, there are other engagement besides posting. Other engagement includes like when you like people post, it's also engagement. When you share other people's posts, it's also engagement. And when you comment on other posts, also engagement. Ah, remember, when you comment, make it positive, all right? Don't do anything negative, all right? Don't give negative comment. Remember, you don't like people to do that to you. Don't do to other people as well. So all the comment must be positive. And also, birthday wishes. Facebook will inform you whose birthday it is today. And so so you, you wish them happy birthday. When somebody wish you happy birthday, you think you're happy? That is creating a relationship with people, okay? So this is what engagement is about. I hope that you understand this, all right? Remember, it's all about engagement. So, all right, so you got to post at least one to three times a day and then like, share, comment, and wish people happy birthday. Okay, let's move on. Now, step number five is about closing, okay? Now, people ask this question. When can you tell prospect about your business? Whoa, so eager to tell people about your business, what you do, and so on. Hey, no, 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 no. Okay, be patient. You only tell people when you have identified your need or problem, okay? And when they ask you for information. So important to ask questions to identify your need or your problem or your pain, okay? When you know the previous experience in network marketing, you must know the previous experience in network marketing first. All right, what they do and which company you're involved with. Because, you know, you must know their network marketing history before you tell them about your company. For all you know, they're already in your company. All right. They're already in your company. So it's important to be able to ask questions and find out more about them. Okay. Remember, don't be too curious to close. All right. Get information from them until they want to know more. Then only then you provide. And how do you provide them with information? Remember, get them out of Facebook. Remember, get them out of Facebook. Send them to a website. Uh, send them to, uh, you know, uh, to uh, Zoom or whatever it is. Okay. Now, talk to people now. Are you interested in succeeding in network marketing? If you are, then to su succeed in network marketing, you must talk to people. This is people business, all right? You're going to talk to people, all right? When you talk to people, then only then you are communicating, you have conversation with people. That's how you build relationship, right? Now, the top earners in the network marketing industry will tell you that if you want to be successful, you must talk to at least 5 to 10 people about your business every single day. Talking to 5 to 10 people a day is not difficult. You're not traveling from east to west or north to south, right? You are talking to people in the comfort of your own home, in front of your computer, chit-chat with them, right? Message them. So 5 to 10 people is not difficult. Are you with me? And, you know, once you get used to it, you'll be fun. Because why? It is the same thing over and over again and you get to know people more about, about people's attitude, about people's behavior, about their character and so on. All right? So basically... You want to be successful, you got to talk to at least 5 to 10 people about your business every single day. Alright, so important, right? But of course, talk to them only when they ask you for information. But what I mean is that talk to people in terms of conversation with them, finding out what they do and so on, remember? Okay, so let's move on. Now, occupation with high burnout right now, it's important to be able to identify who are your prospects, alright? I believe that occupation with high burnout rates are very a uh, good prospect for you, okay? Uh, let me give you uh, a list of it here. Physicians, nurse, social worker, teachers, school principals, attorneys, police officer, public accounting, uh, public accounting, and others. Others, well, you can make a search on Google, right? You go to Google, make a search with, uh, put in the keyword occupation with high burnout rates, okay? So basically, uh, these are the uh, occupation with high burnout rates, which are good prospects as well. And don't forget, I mentioned earlier, uh, go for people with personal development as well. Okay, personal development is a big, big, big industry. Okay, let's move on. Now, five closing questions. Okay, this is uh, just my uh, recommendation. You can use this question. Okay, number one, what do you like about the business? I said, what do you like about the business? Number two, do you have any question? This is important. Ask them, do you have any question? Number three, do you understand how you make money? This is important. They must understand how they make money in the business, right? Number four, do you see opportunity for yourself in your company, right? So ask them, whether you see opportunity for yourself? Get them to be involved, right? Do you see an opportunity? And lastly, number five, when would you like to get started? Very important. Okay, so those are the five close, closing questions which I think that you can use, but if you have your own, no problem whatsoever. This is only my recommendation, all right? 
Now, let's talk about prospecting versus marketing. Okay, what is prospecting? Prospecting is active. All right, this involves connecting, communicating, engagement, and closing. This is what prospecting is about. It's very active, all right? That means you communicate with people, uh, you engage with people, and so this is what uh, uh, prospecting is about, okay? Now, then what is marketing? Marketing is all about branding yourself to create trust. Marketing is branding yourself, okay? Uh, well, I'll talk about what branding is after this, all right? Marketing is passive, all right? But it's also important for your success because you need to brand yourself. You brand yourself by providing value, and solving people's problems so that people view you as uh, uh, an expert, you know, and uh, people trust you, okay? Now, what are the types of branding? I, I have covered this before, but let me go through with you. What type, What are the types of branding? Your about page is very important, right? You should brand yourself. That people read your about page, they say, wow, okay? The graphics, the profile photo, and the cover photo is also very important. Remember, get a nice photo, okay? And regarding your profile photo, okay, if possible, get a professional photo. And for goodness sake, don't change your profile photo every week, all right? I know some people, they take selfie, you know? They take selfie with a yellow hair, with a green hair, and they change their uh, profile photo every week. No, don't do that. It got to be consistent. Keep it for at least a few years, all right? Keep it for at least a few years so people come to your page, they know and they uh, uh, recognize you, okay? And also, what you post is very important. It brand you as well, what you post. Okay, what you post is important. Now, one of the things, advice I can give you, you know, regarding postings and uh, all your conversation as well, please, okay, stay away from politics, number one. Stay away from religion, number two. Stay away from race as well. Because these are very sensitive topics. When you talk about politics, race, or even religion, you know, people don't have the same view with you, and then probably you might insult people. So stay away from those. Are you with me? So what you post is very important. Uh, uh, it has to be positive. Everything that you post must be positive and avoid those three areas just now I mentioned, all right? You must have engagement as well. How engaged are you? That will brand yourself because people notice you. All right, and the last thing that is important is Facebook Live, okay? You have to do a Facebook Live. This is important. I mean, like myself personally, you know, I do a Facebook Live uh, six days a week. But I think I would advise you if you want to do a Facebook Live. I know it's not easy, but uh, you got to do a Facebook Live to brand yourself, giving people information, solving people's problems. Remember, I uh, do a Facebook Live at least once a week. Once a week at least, all right? So do a Facebook Live. I know it's not easy, but you got to get used to it. Like I started doing my Facebook Live a few years ago. It was also very tough. But the more you do, the more easier it gets, okay? Let's move on. Now, we have come to the end of the thing already. But here are the bonuses. I promise you, right? Uh, number one, the bonus is 21st Century Network Marketing and Social Dominance. You can download it here. www.shortlinks.com slash webinar ebook, okay? This is the... Uh, bonus that I, I promise you at the beginning, ask you to stay until the end. This is the bonus. And the other one is network marketing funnel. Now, it's important to be able to have MLM funnel or network marketing funnel to build people so that you can have a funnel people can go through and then you sort people out. All right. So basically, uh, building a funnel is uh, not easy and it can be expensive as well. <clears throat> but what I can uh, show you is you can go to my funnel here, www.dreamhackervip.com and have a look at how a funnel uh, look like. And I propose to you when you go there, please go through the whole funnel so that you have an idea of how to get it done. And also you go to that site there and go to the whole funnel and uh, there is something inside there that I, I, I can offer you to, to create the funnel for you for free as well. Okay, so go there and have a look for yourself and please go through every single thing that is in the funnel, okay? Uh, opt in, put your name, email address, and then follow everything there. Okay, uh, there is a form there as well for you to fill in to to sort out who are who are you and so whether you are qual qualified or not and so on. Okay, let's move on. Okay, now we come to the end of the webinar. I hope you learned something here. All right, the most important thing is you got to take action. Take action. All right, you have the knowledge now, but you need to take massive action to get the result you want. Okay, a lot of people they learn. And after this, they say, oh, I know that already. Then they don't take action. Well, if you don't take action, nothing is going to happen in your life. There's going to be no change. Remember, what I'm telling you is from my years of experience. And I've attended a lot of coaching and a lot of seminars. I pay money to learn all things. And I'm giving it to you here for free. I hope that you appreciate it, okay? 
So uh, take massive action and thanks once again for attending this webinar. So this is Richard Quack here wishing you best of luck. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye.